Many developers working with NativeScript today don't know that there's a difference between the topmost frame, that's the frame you use to navigate, and the top UI frame. While those could be the same sometimes, sometimes they're different, and you should know the difference and when to use each one. Today, I'll show you the difference between them and how to get the frame that you actually want. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex Flutter Who. It's good to be back in my office slash studio. I've been traveling for a few weeks, but I still manage to upload the videos, two videos a week for you. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you wanna get consistent native script tutorials here, as well as tips and tricks, click that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos. And in some other news, the NativeScript Core Pro course has now reached chapter 16. So we have 16 chapters and going. If you haven't signed up yet, check it out. It's on nativescripting.com. This is an advanced level course, so if you've already gone past the basics and you need more, this is the course for you. So that touches a little bit upon the topic that we're dealing with today. When you're navigating in native script, you're using the topmost frame. But if you have a structure that's a little bit out of the ordinary, if you have a UI structure that has multiple nested UI frames, and I do have a few tutorials about that on this channel, check that out. I'll link to it down below in the description. If you have a situation like that, you might run into a case where the UI frame, that's the top level UI frame, and the topmost frame, topmost, are not actually the same thing. Let's take a look at how to differentiate them and how to grab the UI frame that you actually want. What does topmost frame mean to you? To me, it means the topmost frame, the frame at the very top of the UI stack, and it doesn't change while the application is running. Well, that's not the case with the native script topmost, as I'm about to demonstrate. And this caught me a little bit off guard, so let's take a look. Here is the Hello World template, and everybody's pretty familiar with this now. Right now, we're pointing at app root. This is the root frame. Now, this frame is pointing at main page. What I want to create is the nested frame example, which I've been using more and more often. By the way, if you haven't seen my tutorial on nested frames in NativeScript, check that out. I have a version in NativeScript core as well as NativeScript with view on this channel. I show you how to use nested frames and how to use that to create a bottom sheet. So here we have one frame. This is the root frame, if you will. I'm going to create a root page. So I'm gonna call this root page.xml. And this root page is gonna have a page. So let's just go here to main page and I'm gonna copy what's in here just for the markup. I wanna clear this up a little bit and then I'll copy this markup, paste it here in root page. And really, I don't want anything in here except for another frame. So this will be our nested frame. I don't even want the navigating to event. So here we're gonna have a frame and I don't know why I'm writing this. I can just copy this, copy this here paste it here. So you'll see that now we have a frame inside of a page, which is inside of a frame. And our app root default page will be pointing to root page instead of main page. So in the app root XML frame, I want to give this frame an ID just so that I can easily identify it and print it out to the console when I'm going to be testing this. And I'm going to call this app root frame. Now on this root page XML, inside this frame, I'm gonna give this frame an ID of root page frame. All right, just so that we can differentiate those two. Let's save everything. And when we take a look, you'll see that really visually there's no difference here between what we had before and now. You can't really tell from the look of this app that it's a nested frame structure. So let's have this button right here. When I tap this, I'm going to navigate to another page. So here's our button right here. I'm going to, instead of data binding this event handler on tap, I'm actually going to just expose it in the code behind. So here's my code behind. I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. And I'm going to export a function called on tap which is gonna have my args, event data. I'm not gonna really use that. But what I wanna do is navigate. And as you've seen in many examples before, we use topmost to navigate between pages. This is a very common thing to do. And topmost is a function that returns us the topmost frame. But the naming here is a little confusing because it's not the topmost frame of the UI structure, it's the topmost navigated frame. Let me show you what that really means and what the difference is. So here's topmost. It's actually a function that's coming from TNS core modules UI frame. We don't need the second frame namespace. I'm going to take that out. Topmost is going to give us a frame and we can use the navigate function here. And I'm going to pass in a navigation entry. 
So I'm gonna pass in a module name and I'm gonna create another page here called page two page. So let's go over here, create another file called page two dash page dot XML. And I'll also create a page two dash page code behind file. Let's just copy what's in main page. I'm gonna copy all this, paste it in the page two page. I don't want the navigating to event handler. I don't need an action bar. I'll have a stack layout so I can have a label in there and show what that we're on page two here. And then I also want to have a button with an on tap handler. Let's go to main page code behind file. And I'm going to take this on tap here, this handler and paste it in the page to page code behind file as well. But instead of navigating, I'm going to just say console.log and I'm going to use the topmost function here, just like we did before. This is going to give us the frame and I'm going to get its ID property. Remember we put IDs on those frames. Where are they here? In the root page, we have an ID root page frame and and in the app root frame, we also have an ID of app root frame. So I want to print that out. And I also want to print that out when we tap the button in main page. So console.log, let's go with topmost.id. All right, let's see if this works. I'm going to save everything. Let's head over to our app. When I tap this button, it should navigate me to page two. And also it should print out to the console right here. It should print out the frame ID. So I'm going to click tap. Looks like HMR is not happy when I just add a new file into the mix. So I'm going to go ahead and restart my app and rebuild it. HMR is hot module replacement and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to click tap here and we navigate to page two and you see that we have app root frame printed out here because at that point right here in main page, when I tap this, I'm printing out topmost ID and topmost at that point is our app root frame. And that's why we get this printed out here. Now back to the simulator. If I tap on this button right here, we get app root frame, which is great. That's still the same one. If I go back and tap on this button, we still get app root frame. Okay, so that seems like it's working just fine. So Alex, what are you talking about? Why is this confusing? It's not really confusing. We're always getting the app root frame. Well, if you've seen the tutorial that I showed you on nested frames and the use cases that we can use with the nested framing, you'll know that you can actually navigate using the child frame instead of the topmost frame. So right over here, when we tap in the main page, let's get a hold of that view that we tapped on, which is actually a button, but it's args.object, and I'm going to cast this as a view. And then we also have a frame here, the closest frame, not the topmost frame, but the closest frame. And that's going to be view. And then we can get a page of this view and then the frame that's closest to the page that we're currently using. So this frame is different than the topmost frame at this point. So instead of using the topmost frame to navigate, I can use the new closest frame to navigate. So let's do that. Let's go back to the app. I'll open up my console here as well. And I'm going to tap. And there we go. We have app root frame. That's cool. If I hit tap here, uh oh, what's this root page frame? Hmm. Well, wait a minute. I'm on page two and I just hit tap. Let's go to page two code behind and I hit tap here. I'm asking for topmost ID. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm still referring to topmost here, but it's printing out a different ID. What if I go back to the original page main page and hit tap here? Okay, wait a minute. I get navigated, but now my topmost is still printing out root page frame. So the reference to topmost actually changed during runtime. And this is something that's a bit of a gotcha with native script is that topmost is not always going to give you the topmost frame. It's going to give you the most recently navigated frame. So here's what I would recommend. Topmost is a bit of a dangerous thing here because it's kind of a misnomer. You think you're using topmost, but you're not. So to be on the safe side, inside the frame module, there is another function you can use called get frame by ID. If you use this function, then you can always refer to the frames that you need by IDs without having to traverse the UI structure by using the views page and then the frame and then the page and the frame if you have multiple nested frames or without using the topmost. So what you would do is just get the frame using that function called get frame by ID and then you would pass in the frame that you want. So in our case, the app root frame ID is called app root frame. I'm going to copy that, paste that right in here and say const f name. 
or actually just call it frame ID, get frame by ID and then get its ID. And then I'm going to print out this frame ID like that. So now if I go back to my application, I'm going to hit tab here. We get the app root frame. Now on the page two, I hit tab, we get the root page frame. And if I go back to my main page and I hit tab here, here we have app root frame because we know that we got the top UI frame by its ID. All right, now let's read some of your comments from the previous video. I did this video about large titles in iOS and Android. And this is a tutorial that shows you how to get those large animated titles that collapse into the action bar. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, check that out. Rakesh says, excellent tutorial, Alex. I would like to see dark mode and light mode switch. Thank you so much. Yes, Rakesh, that's coming in iOS 13. Dark mode is something you can switch on and we can actually detect that now in native script, of course because NativeScript, you can detect stuff out of the box. But not only that, NativeScript also provides a dark mode class on the top UI frame. I have a tutorial about that as well on this channel, so check that out. And I will do a specific tutorial on dark mode in iOS and Android. Thanks, Rakesh. David Wilson says, thanks for the tutorial. I'd like to see the transition between news list and details page in the iOS news app, but done in native script. So I think what you're talking about is that shared transition animation. And actually I've got one coming up very shortly. Christian Alexander says, hello, Alex. I'd like to see a UI with map as a background like Uber. Greetings from Peru. Yeah, the Uber app is pretty cool. And uh, I will have uh, some maps tutorials here as well. Now I think Uber uses their own proprietary map drawings. I'm not 100% sure about that, but there are map integrations with NativeScript that we can actually implement. And I'll get to that in a future tutorial. Bogdan says, awesome. Thank you for the tutorial, Alexander. Marco Marquez says, Alex, congratulations on your videos. They're awesome. I would like to see something about development on tablets and phones within the same project. Well, Marco, you can actually develop for tablets and phones in the same project. That's what NativeScript is all about. Not only doing cross-platform development for iOS and Android, but you can also do multiple device development on the same project. And I should do a tutorial on that as well, just to get people used to the idea. All right, that's it for this tutorial, folks. I'll see you in the next one.